<laughs> okay. I think I got this one. I think this one is three. Got that one right. I got them all I got them all uh, labeled so I know which wings because they're all different. The way they fit on the dragonflies. All the wings. How long did the sculpture take you to build? Uh it took me about three months. Like three months straight or just Yeah, three straight? months, like 12 to 14 hour days. Yeah. Similar like uh, dragonfly sculpture for a city of Brookfield. And I just wanted to... I had fun making the dragonflies, but I wanted to make them better. I thought I could do a better job with it. Uh, plated steel, and then this is painted. Plated and painted. Yeah. Zinc nickel plated. And then this is uh, painted with like a patina. I got I had a commission to make a, a dragonfly sculpture. And um, after I made that sculpture, I wanted to make another one and make it better. But dragonflies, you know, they're very, they're, they're very fascinating insects. You know, there's a lot of things that they do that people don't really know about. Like they just, they're just flying around, catching, catching bugs out of midair. You know, um, they're symbolic in like Japanese culture for uh, perseverance and uh, strength and. Uh, you know, they're always moving forward, even though they just go side to side and up and down. They're always facing forward, like persevering. So. I've uh, made uh, these cages, and uh, I call it the caged impulse. The two cages, and I pictured like two people holding hands through the through the cage, like through uh, an opening that connected the two cages. And actually, I put mirrors in there so that people can stand and look in a mirror and see themselves in that cage, you know, that hold, hold hands together inside. Call that cage impulse. And then, uh, um, right now, I'm working with uh, after school kids in Rogers Park in Chicago. They're painting eyes, and I'm putting the eyes on a tree. All the kids are painting all these different shapes, sizes, eyes. And then I've uh, I fit them to a tree just by by hammering them onto the tree. I'm, I'm a, a fourth generation Chicago blacksmith, and then further on uh, through the generations in England, my family was you know doing blacksmithing. Yeah. to be here today. It's a lovely day. I did a lot of exploring of old ruins out west of the people that they call the uh, people who came before. Often known as like the Aztecs or whatever, but it was out in the, in the far west and uh, Pretty close. I got a lot of inspiration from the surrounding rocks areas, from the buildings that we explored. Another, that kind of you know, one or two here. So when I came back to Chicago, I created yeah, well, this piece. Uh, the colors on the piece represent fire, they represent the sky, 
They represent the earth, they represent water, all of the things that were critical to the survival of those people. I was originally born in England and then we moved to Canada and then moved to the east coast of our United States and I've been in Chicago area for the last 40 years. Uh, I started out thinking that I was going to be a painter, but in, uh, after studying painting for a while I got introduced to sculpture. And I found sculpture was more amenable to the kind of the background that I had. I was taught to be, to use wood, I was taught, taught to use metals, and so I got into sculpture because of that. <laughs> Many of the Areas where I was born in England used stone as a building material. Uh, gates to cities, city walls, uh, the Romans put in roads. Uh, I lived in an area in the country that had a lot of that kind of thing. So that later on in my life when I was able to, I got more interested in using stone as a building material and as a sculpture material. It had to do with where I was raised, what I saw, how that became integrated with the people in the West and how they survived and depended upon stone for their housing and for shelter and all that. Okay, you're welcome.